I'm here with my daughter Daisy today um, uh, for our daily doodle and today we're going to do a really gorgeous elephant but we're going to do an elephant a nice big one um, and we're going to do it in a kind of man with mandala patterns mandala patterns means uh, mandala is an Indian art form where you have what are they Daisy do you know uh, kind of like zentangles like zentangles, yeah, which are kind of like repeating patterns. So it's a really kind of nice um, art project that kind of sort of is in between art and um, math and science, quite STEM orientated. There's lots of concentric patterns, which means repeating patterns. Um, and later on, we're then going to colour it in using chalk. So it's going to be really lovely. Um, I'm using a larger piece of paper for this, about A3. Doesn't matter if you haven't got an A3, you can use anything. So you could do this on um, a newspaper because we're going to colour it all in later. Uh, you could do it on a cardboard box. You could do it if you had uh, a piece of chalk. Kids, you could go and literally do it on the kitchen floor and do it on the chalk. You're going round, Daisy. Daisy's going to draw it with me today. Um, just to prove it's not a fluke. But I have to say, it has been... Hi, Ivy! Welcome back! Um, oh, what's the question um, for adult sip and paint tomorrow? There is an adult sip and paint Saturday night. Join me. I'm not going to have my four wonderful ladies with me because obviously we're now pretty much in social isolation and lockdown. So I will be in the studio on my own. But I might have a bit of fun. I might have a little bit of a surprise for you. Um, so it's 7 o'clock tomorrow evening and we are painting the most gorgeous painting of Spain so we're gonna uh, as I said the sip and paints the weekly Spanish sip and uh, sorry the weekly sip and paints are all about um, supporting all those countries that are a few steps ahead of us Spain is kind of following Italy at the moment and you know UK is not far behind so it's it's pretty worrying times um, so we're gonna do a Spanish painting tomorrow a Pablo Picasso um, so that's tomorrow night eight o'clock get your wine get your snacks get your cup of tea your green tea if that's what you want those of you that are in the northern hemisphere do it as a breakfast sip and paint get your family round and the although I say it's an adult sip and paint it is it obviously it's that time of the night on Saturday um, down in Australia but really you know if the kids are still up then do it together i was so humbled today and a big shout out to carol russell my friend um in brisbane she's obviously homeschooling like we all are but she had all of her family around today doing one of my sip and paints then doing the venice one and it was absolutely fantastic so i was super impressed um so that's tomorrow but today is the daily doodle and after we finish the daily doodle my daughter's probably gonna um scoot off home and then i'm gonna come back and i'm gonna finish the harry potter monster make so if you've got your cereal box ready to go and you've covered it in the in the toilet paper or the kitchen towel like i suggested then we're going to finish it off and make it the monster book of monsters and if you haven't prepped it then guys, just watch me, have some fun, have a chitter chatter, and then if you love it, then you can prep it and do it over the weekend, all right? Um, I still will do art over the weekend, there'll be lots of bits and bobs going on, and I've got some other great ideas for next week. All right, so we're gonna get to it. I'm going to turn my camera around, I'm gonna do it on the paper, and you're gonna watch me as we go. If you want to do it in, Ooh, there's Daisy over there just see her <laughs> ready to go and there's my paper if you want to use a pencil to start off with then you can and of course you can then use pen afterwards but in order to then put color over the top you really can own if you're going to use a wet base color then really you're, the only thing you can use is a biro if you want to use a dry color like chalk, which is what I'm going to use today, we can use Sharpies. You can use Sharpies with wet paint, like watercolour, but it will bleed and spread. The black lines will bleed and spread, okay? So, and in, 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 it doesn't matter. If that's what happens, it can be a great look. All right, so I've got a couple of Sharpies. These are just ones that the kids, you know, we've all got millions of Sharpies for writing names on school uniform a thousand times. When they first go to prep, we go and buy all those funky stickers, and by the time you've got two or three there, you can't be bothered and you just write the names in. Uh, so that's where I've been. Um, and I've got a thicker one, and obviously that's got a thicker nib, all right? 
In addition to that, I've got a pencil, pencil sharpener, and a rubber. So if you want to start off with a pencil, please do, kids. I'm going to be bold and brave and go straight to pen. Daisy, what are you going to do? Daisy's going to use a pencil. So I might show you hers as she goes. Okay, so, <laughs> so we, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with, this is the top of your picture. This is the bottom of your picture. This is the middle area. And we kind of want to draw a triangle. Now, actually, I will draw it in pencil to start with, just to show you what I mean. Okay, so from this top corner, I'm going to draw a triangle down to the, oh, gone a bit wobbly. Good job I am in pencil. Down to the middle of the bottom of the page, okay? Hopefully you can see that. So I've drawn one line down to the middle of the bottom. And then I'm going to do one line down to join it. So you've got a big V shape. And it doesn't really matter if you have, it doesn't really matter if you've got a wobble, just rub that out. Remember what I say, kids, I say this all the time, and parents, one of the biggest issues is if you press too hard. If you press too hard, they do not rub out. Daisy Bustles just pressed too hard. I can see that. Use the side of your pencil to get a nice, soft pencil line, okay? Okay, up here, I'm going to do mine in pencil, and I'm going to do it over in pen, because that's probably what you guys are going to do. We want to kind of create a, a letter S. But if I show you what a really curvy letter S is, is like that. Um, I'm like that. I don't want it to be that curvy. I want it to be... Daisy, can you go and find another rubber so yeah. I can use this one? Otherwise, we're going to have a problem. Okay. I want it to be a wider curve. So I'm starting up here. I'm going down. I go out to where my V-shape is. Oh, my goodness. I bring her in the art studio once. And she's already had a catastrophe. Oh, Come on, Daisy. <laughs> Hang on, let me just show you how much she's blushing because that's how you. <laughs> oh dear, she's just like me, unfortunately. Oh, fortunately. Okay, so we've done a curve there. We're coming down to the outside of our V. You come back in, and can you see? So it's a very soft curve of a letter S, a very soft, but it's not got the curly bit at the top. So it's a soft, so if you need to do this a couple of times, do it a couple of times until you get that curve right. And then we're gonna bend it back to the outside of our V, yeah? That's our guideline, this is our guideline. So we go, we start there, curve it down, curve it back out, so it's exactly the same kind of shape of a curve. And then we just curve it down to the letter V and we're back down to our guideline. Now this is gonna be the trunk. And obviously the trunk doesn't end up getting this small, um, this far from the head. This is the kind of eye sockets here. So we're going to follow this guideline down, but I'm just going to curve it out a little bit. And I'm just going to make it slightly wider, all right? So you can see, if that was my middle point here, that's the middle of my page, I'm probably about two centimetres to the right of that middle line. Now, because I'm slightly getting a bit heavy with my lines, I'm now going to rub out that V-point line. Any extra sketchy lines I just did then when I was doing my trunk. And that bit there, and that piece there, and that piece there. So now I've got my line, which is the top of my eye, and I'm down to the trunk at the bottom. So good so far? Awesome. We've got to repeat this on the other side. So let's just mark in where our halfway point is. It's there. Hopefully that's pretty much in line. It is. So I don't want to go right over to the edge here now because um, my elephant is slightly looking this way. So I'm starting, if that's my middle point, I'm going to go halfway between the middle and the corner of my paper. I'm going to come down and I'm going to put a little mark in line with that bump because that means that's where the eye is okay that's the two eye area so i want my line because if if our head is looking this way then the eye of the elephant on this side is slightly hidden but you will see the eye on this side okay so i've done a little guideline there there's the middle of my paper and then i've gone halfway between so it's a quarter of a way see how good this is for your math Quarter of the way on the top, I've done another little guideline. I've come all the way down and there's my eye. 
Now, I'm not drawing my eye yet. I just want to know where it is because I want the curve on this side to go out around the eye, okay? So I'm gonna start here above, above the eye and just underneath my quarter way mark. And I'm gonna do the opposite S shape. So it goes out around the eye shape. Back. And then out to, to the very edge of where our trunk's gonna be. So it should mirror that shape there. In fact, mine needs to go out a bit quicker. So you can see I'm using the side of my pencil. I'm not drawing it on the tip of my pencil. That means that when I have little areas like this, guys, look, super easy. You can just rub them out. Often we get super frustrated. Hi, Fiona. I thought we were doing a panda. Oh my goodness, we were gonna do a panda. Oh, Fiona, epic fail. I am so sorry. Hang on, let me talk to you quick. I am so sorry, I forgot about the panda. Can I do the panda tomorrow? Do you know what? Um, I've spent the last 24 hours having a pretty torrid time because I was gonna make all these beautiful masks for all these beautiful people um, around the gap. I even had an order from somebody in Melbourne. I had an order from somebody in the UK and it all went completely peak tong. Um, peak tong is a very slangy English way of saying it went, I can't say tits up. Can I say tits up? You, girl, you kids are probably gonna giggle now. Tits up means all upside down. So it went like that because some people said, it's a really bad idea because they're not medically sound. Anyway, it's a very long story that caused me a lot of, I wouldn't say anxiety, but I was kind of sad. I was sad that I was trying to do something nice for somebody and it was perceived in the wrong way. So anyway, this morning I've then spent my whole time going back to Spotlight, which is where I bought the fabric from to try and get a refund because obviously I'm not earning any money. So I'd spent $250 of my own money buying fabric yesterday to do all these masks. Some of them I made 20 last night, so I've already cut up $50 worth of um, fabric. So that's the end of that. But anyway, I, was mani I did manage to get 160 back. So I kind of have been all like that. Um, plus, because I moved house, I had to go to the um, letting agent, too much talk, Karen, too much talk, letting agent to um, take my keys back. I'm really sorry. I do want to do the panda and I've done a design for it as well. So panda is tomorrow, Sienna. Panda is tomorrow. But today we're gonna to do an elephant. Kinda of cool though, I think an elephant will work. So back to the elephant, let's go. <gasps> Forgot about the panda daisy. Oh, I've gotta get this right now. Okay, so that looks like it's fitting. Okay, so we've got the eye, we've got the eye, and we're gonna come, come down. Now, I don't want this to be, again, following. This was a guide mark, okay? This is a guide mark. So I'm gonna round it there, and I'm just gonna bring it in a little bit, because this is where the tusk would come. Bring it in from my guideline a little bit. Get it back out to that guideline. Maybe put a little bit of a wobbly kink in it. And I don't want to finish it that close down there. I'm just checking that I can see the bottom. You can. I want to kind of do exactly the same. I want it to finish probably two centimetres from the centre. So I'm going to come out there and I'm going to go down there. So hopefully that looks like a bigger trunk. Would you agree? Good job. Okay, so once you've marked out those sort of bits, you can then rub out this line here. So I'm going to rub out that guideline there because that's my trunk. Gorgeous. Daisy, are you okay? Yeah. Beautiful. If when you look at it, and I'm just looking at yours, Daisy, I think ooh, I think that's way too much. I'm just don't rub it out. Let me show everybody. You see, Daisy's here has got too much of a kink. Let me just pull it up here. It's got too much of a kink you just need to straighten it down there. So, because at the end of the day, it is a trunk, okay? So you just need to think about it as a trunk shape. So we do want it to have a bit of a kink, because at the end of the day, um, elephants don't have perfectly straight anything and neither does anybody. So um, that's, that's really important. Okay, this looks a bit strange here, but at the end of the day, we want to frame the head before we put the ears on. So I'm going to the top of my page, between the quarter way mark, and the corner, I'm gonna do another mark. Okay, so now this is an eighth along the top or a quarter of my half area. So just a little mark there. And I'm gonna do a similar shape to this. And I'm gonna go out, curve, back, curve, and I'm gonna join it there. So this is the start of the ear. Uh, it needs to be about a centimetre either side. Yeah, yours is too wide. Let me help you. 
come here. I'll just help Daisy a minute. So her nose has gone a bit wide. So just looking at it, it needs to finish about two centimeters that side and Daisy this side, two centimeters that side. So the trunk does come in, all right? Yeah. Okay, good job. So I've just done a curve here. It's a similar shape to this, but just a little bit different. And it comes into the head space just there. On this side, we're going to do a curve there. This is again the inside of the ear. We're going to curve it up and around. And then we need to put our tusks in. So to put our tusks in, one is going to go this side. We're going to go from this side here. We're going to go out to about there and cut it across. So it's just a little bit of a wobble there and then back towards the trunk. And then we're gonna put our tusk shape and it's gonna go off the page. So it's like a banana, but it's, you're not gonna obviously join them up. So it's gonna be two parallel lines and it's gonna go off the page there, off the page on one side. And on this side, if I said to you, this is like doing the sleeve, like the sleeve of a jumper, if you were do, or, or, a, or a dress, if you were drawing a little girl and you wanted to do a sleeve, it's like doing the sleeve of a dress, okay, if you're drawing a person. So that this is the area that the tusk is going to come out of that little curve. So you can see that those two areas where we curved in, there and there, that's where the tusks come out. And this tusk is going to curve inwards towards the nose. We say tusk, but it's like a big claw, isn't it? Or a big horn. So it's super easy. It's just a curve. It's, if it was a banana, it'd be much sharper, much more of a curve. So it's a soft curve, that one. A soft curve. Yeah, that's fine, Daisy. Good job. Now, this picture is going to be um, full of mandala patterns. And this is where you guys are going to go to town super, super lot. It might be that... Um, you, I don't sit and draw all of mine with you and uh, that you come, you get to see mine tomorrow all finished. But we'll, 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 do, we'll do quite a few to start with. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to draw this eye area. And the eye is like um, a very pointy leaf. So it's gonna start up here. You know where the center of our eye is? It's gonna go down around it and we want it to be kind you know very um oriental you know an indian mandala so we've got that lovely point there and then i'm going to draw a circle around it am i going too fast no, put, the tusk the other way. put the tusk the wrong way uh, that doesn't matter they could to be fair daisy they would point in lots of different ways so that doesn't really matter so this is my eye shape like that and I'm going to do, going to make it go up to there. So almost, I want this shape to be like a paisley. And a paisley is one of those kind of teardrops, curvy things. So that's kind of a paisley shape around the eye. Like that. I'm going to rub that cross out now. I don't need that anymore. Yeah, that's looking good. Okay. Now, while you're finishing off drawing up your bits and pieces, I'm gonna start to put in the pen lines, okay? So I'm gonna start off with all those main lines. So you have a bit of a look and go, oh, is that okay? Okay, I don't like that. I'm just gonna curve that out there. So have a quick check of your drawing. Make sure you're happy with it. Rub out any extra lines that you might have that you're not happy with. Check, check the guide. So I don't need that V line anymore. So I'm going to get rid of that one. Like that. Yeah, that's lovely, Daisy. Well done. Um, I don't need this line down the bottom. And the, the other. No, the other eye. Is, so Daisy just asked me, shall I do the other eye? The other eye is actually here would be round that side. So this is the, the brow of the eye. So you're only actually going to see one eye on this picture. So one of, the, one of the important things that we want is obviously the central down the trunk. So I'm going to start off by putting in a V in the centre of the head, like this. 
and I'm going to do a circle inside that V as well. It's a little semicircle. I'll just rub out my center line. Good job. And I'm going to put two lines in this V, so one there. I've got a little bit of a ridge on the table here, but hopefully you can see that. All right, now we start to put the lines that splay outward. So starting from the center down there, like a sunburst, you're going to start to put your lines going out around the V, okay? Beautiful. Now with mandala patterns, it's very symmetrical. Symmetrical means that one side is the same as the other. Beautiful. <laughs> Karen just said, Dad just gave me chocolate. Uh, is, is, that's not you, Karen, or a pair. That's um, Sienna got chocolate. We haven't got any chocolate. Daisy, we need some chocolate. Yeah, we We've got fridge. some chocolate in the fridge. Let's have some chocolate, I think. Okay, so we're now going to put a beautiful kind of flower. You can go get some chocolate. We're now going to put a beautiful kind of flower pattern or a leaf pattern around the outside of that. Soften off the hard lines with some beautiful curved lines. Soften off the hard lines with some beautiful curved lines. Now, the way mandala patterns are is essentially it's a repeating pattern work. And I am happy and I want to encourage to do whatever repeating pattern work you would like to do. You do not have to finish my, fill it, uh, follow mine, okay? You can follow, you can do your own repeating pattern, you can create your own patterns. You might wanna do little heart shapes, you might wanna do spots or dots, that's absolutely fine, okay? If you get stuck, that's what I'm here for, to give you some ideas so you can copy, but you don't have to. Be creative, have your own ideas, that's brilliant. So that's our middle piece. Now, the reason why I've done that is because I want to do this big piece down the trunk. Um, and I need to draw my a kind of area for it to come, come to, a line for it to come to. And I don't want, I want to ensure that I try and show everybody that this trunk is curved. So instead of just drawing, making sure that you can see this, kids, instead of just drawing straight across the page, I want it to have a camber. A camber is a posh way of saying curve. But I don't want it to be whoop, like a mountain. I don't want it to be that big. I want it to be a soft camber. Um, I tell you what's got a camber is, uh, in England, we call them sleeping policemen, those humps that you drive over to keep everybody from driving too fast. Um, we, 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 we're gonna do something like that. So from the tusk to the tusk area, I'm doing a slight curve to help illustrate that that trunk is around. Thanks, Daisy. Woohoo! Hope you got something at home. And if you haven't, say, Mum, where's my afternoon treat, please? <laughs> I can see you all running off to go and get the kids something. It's important, children, to stay nutritious. So, have some chocolate, but make sure you have a piece of fruit as well. Okay. Back we go. Okay, so I've done my camber, and now I want to put in the centerpiece of this design. And it's kind of like a big edge. It's going to go to about two eyes. It's going to go back as far as there. And I'm doing it really softly because I want to make sure it's, the arch has the same amount one side as it does the other. So if I put my halfway line down there, I want to try and make it so, so that it is, I want to try and make sure that it's equal, wet, equal size on one side and equal side on the other. So now I'm happy with that. I'm just going to draw that a bit darker for you. So that it'd be easier for you guys to see at home. There you go. And inside this, we're going to do some pattern work. So I'm going to do, am I going too fast or all right? Oh, no, I can continue. Okay. I'm going to do another ring. Like that. And then I'm going to do a triangle. Like this. And at the bottom, the underneath of the triangle, I need to lift and curve a little bit, okay? Again, the same curve as that camber to help show that this elephant's trunk is curved. Now, inside this triangle, you can create whatever patterns you want, 
I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a small triangle. Then I'm going to do a diamond. <clears throat> Lots of mathematical shapes here. Then I'm going to do another camber curve across like that. So they're just slightly curved. It's not straight across. It's just got a slight curve. Underneath my diamond, I'm going to do another triangle. And then I'm going to do another triangle that way. So you can see I've kind of done a, a crisscross. And that should leave me with a space there to do another triangle and a space there to do another triangle. Now I want to pattern out these triangles. So this one, I'm going to do small triangles inside like that. And this one, I'm going to do a dot of triangles. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. <clears throat> and that's going to be my patterning for that one. In the inside of this, I know it seems like it gets complicated, but honestly, these mandalas, that is what they're like. They have lots of lines and lots of patterns. Okay, everybody happy? Hi Val, nice to see you. Hope your kids are doing me and at the top of it I think I'm going to do a heart the centerpiece there I'm going to do a heart it feels like this is a bit unresolved unresolved too much space so I'm going to do another tiny triangle there and a dot in the middle and I'm going to put some stripes on this one and some stripes on that one because it just looked, felt like it was a bit too empty beautiful now, I'm going to repeat again. Like I said to you, if you want to do your own patterns, go ahead, guys. You have all got these, all of these kind of doodle books, haven't you? And these patterns are just what you've got in your doodle books. So if you've got no clue at all, at, at, at all go and grab one of your doodly books, which I'm sure a lot of you of them have got. Or you can go online and just Google doodle patterns. Um, or uh, pattern work or mandala patterns and you'll come up with a whole host of pattern work that you can copy all right so I'm just doing another line there and slowly you can see I'm building up my patterns this is like a heartbeat like that a nice high heartbeat and inside the heartbeat I'm gonna do another one and then it's important to do that line again. It can't, you're kind of sectioning the pattern up, I would say. And then I'm going to do circles underneath. Oh, now that line has gone up too high, so I need to put it down. That's gone too low. It needs to go there. Okay, and circle. And then think, what, what could these? These could have stars inside. Something like that. Gorgeous. And then I want to do some little curvy strips around the outside of my triangle. Remember, this is the centerpiece, really, of our elephant, like that. And then I'm going to do some straight lines down so that I've filled up all that space. Okay, now I want to connect my top to my bottom. So to do that, I'm just going to move this off that ridge because I need to start my pencil there. To do that, I'm going to go down and then I'm going to follow round outside of my archway. So down there and around. I'm going to do three of these lines down there. And this line is going to come out wider. And the last one down there. And you end up getting more of a soft curve on your third one, okay? Starting again on this side, we're going to go down there, follow the curve and straight down. The second one, slightly less curved and down. And the third one, ooh, did that wrong. Didn't go down first. The third one goes down but then wide curve and out. So we end up with that beautiful curve shape. Just looking at this one, and that didn't go straight down, so rub it out, and it needs to go straight down rather than wide. 
So that's our beautiful patterning there. Okie dokie. Daisy, can you just do me a favour? Yeah. If I take out the cable there, yeah. can you just go and put the cable in there? Over there for me. Oh, I can do it. It's okay. Beautiful. All right, let's go back to this eye shape. So I'm going to rub out my dot up here, and I want to create a beautiful eye. I'm going to do a lovely eye shape like that with an eyeball there. Okay, so a lovely eye shape like that. And then I'm going to do almost like petals coming out as if they're beautiful eyelashes, petals that are coming out. Like that. And then I'm going to do that lovely kind of curvy edge to my eye. I'm gonna make it go up and around. And then I'm going to do a second line around my paisley drop. Like that. That's my elephant eye done. And I want to try and copy this on this side as well. So that it looks like, you know, you could see that this elephant would have had the same patterning. So I'm just going to go a tiny bit round like that. Like that's the outer edge. Then a tiny bit round like that. That's the second edge. And then probably all you would see is the curve. So as if that is that part of the design, that part of the design on that side of the eye. Beautiful. So you can do more pattern work if you want to. You might decide to put another kind of design here. You can put in wobbly lines or something inside your stripes if you like. But I'm going to go down to the trunk now um, and let's put in some really cool. Now, these ones here, I kind of want to be a little bit celtic -y. So I'm from Cornwall back in England, um, which is one of the Celtic nations of England. And I'm going to kind of do a bit of more of a Celtic reference. So underneath the nose here, I'm going to kind of draw a triangular shield sh shape, a triangular shield shape. So let's call it a big Dorito, kids. Let's draw a big Dorito. One big Dorito there. Another big Dorito. They're a bit longer than Doritos, but you get the idea. And the third Dorito over here. No, if you want to make them shorter, Daisy, that's fine. Honestly, everyone's will be slightly different. I say all the time, and let me repeat this. This is one of the things I say to my children in an art class. Everybody's art is going to be different. Every time you write, when you're writing at school, your handwriting is different. Everybody holds a pencil differently and, pressure, and pre, uh, presses differently. So nobody's is going to be the same. And that is absolutely fine, okay? Don't stress. So mine will look different to Daisy's and I want them to be different. You want to have a whole variety of different. Nobody wants to be the same. Okay. All right. So there we go. Let's put it back. So I've got my um, Dorito shape. Now, I want the end of my Doritos to be a bit more curved, so I'm just curving those up. Nice curve at the bottom. Awesome, awesome. And now we're gonna add a really strong pattern. So the pattern is gonna be based on this central triangle. And on this side, the triangle's gonna be here and here. So that's, and I wanna make sure that they're straight, okay. And then I'm going to create this swooping effect. So it's a bit like mirrors some of the lines up here, but we're going to go from here and down, here and down, and another one here and down. I guess it's like drawing curtains, something like that. And then we're going to fill in that space there. One, two, one, two, and then fill in that space there. Underneath. I'm going to do a much longer triangle and I'm going to do this shape which goes out to the side like a curtain but then in to the middle almost like a diamond. I'm going to fill that with a circle and a circle and a small triangle at the bottom. So we want to repeat those patterns on either side. If you have got your own pattern that you'd like to do please do your own pattern. And when you can't fit it round, you just stop, okay? You, it just rolls around the corner of your elephant, so that's fine. So we're gonna finish these patterns like this. Doodly-doo, 
down like that, circle, circle. If you're doing something different, I can't wait to see it. Once we've done all these lines, we're gonna use our black Sharpie and it's gonna take us a while to go over it, but that's okay, we can carry on. Or I can come back and show you my finished one later. Now, there's lots of empty space here, so we want to really fill up the rest of this trunk, okay? We wanna fill up this rest of this trunk with beautiful pattern work. I'm gonna go down here. I'm gonna draw a camber, which is one of those arched lines, and I'm gonna do another one, create a stripe. I'm gonna go further down and do another stripe. About the same width, really. And then down here, add another stripe. Okay, good job. Hi, Chelsea, welcome to Art Club. And Julie, welcome. Hope the kids have got their art bits and bobs out. If you're joining midway through, I always save these afterwards so the guys can, your kids can um, do it uh, at their leisure tomorrow or later on. All right, so we're gonna fill in these patterns. I want this beautiful sort of scallopy shell. So to do a scallopy shell, I'm going to do three arches, three rainbows, children, like this, one, two, three. And then I want to create kind of like patterns within that. So it's easiest if we talk about it in like, um, as if it was a petal in a leaf, in, in, in a flower. But then as it gets wider, it's going to be more like a square or a scallop, just kind of creating a shell pattern. And then the, the, the highest one, I want you to create the shape around the outside of that rainbow so that it, the rainbow has got a bit of a bumpy edge. So you've got a really kind of different kind of unusual pattern. And like I say, we're gonna do this three times again. So one, two, three lines there. One, two, three lines there. Start off with your little flower at the bottom, the daisy. Beautiful. And then go into more of a kind of um, irregular pattern just to fill up that second rainbow. but staying within those lines. But then the last one, you're really gonna try and change the edge of that rainbow to get a different kind of shape. Like that. Good job. So that's that bit there. And now we've got left with this space. So what do you do with that space? Well, you fill in with whatever you want. So I think it'd look perfect if we filled in a diamond shape there and a diamond shape there. And then we might put a circle in here, which we might then put like a flowery center in as well. And we might put the scallopy flower around the outside. Now let's mirror those lines. So let's go up there and up there and up there and up there. So you start to have this repeating pattern and this kind of semi-structure to what we're doing. How you doing, Daisy? Are you, are you kind of doing your own pattern? Gorgeous, that's fine, I love that. Do some spots, remember whatever you do on one side, you wanna do on the other side, because you wanna have a symmetrical pattern. A symmetrical pattern, okay? This diamond looks a bit weird, so just change that a little bit, and that one doesn't look wide enough. That looks good to me. All right, with these ones here, I'm gonna put in some extra lines. So I'm gonna put in some extra stripes. And I think I'll put spots along these stripes. There, 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 there. And obviously following the trunk down. Follow the trunk down. It takes a while this, doesn't it? And, and I know what it's like with these sort of pictures. Kids go, oh, I've had enough now, it's boring. Well, that's okay. You can go off and play and then you can come back to it later. It's all good. You don't have to do art in one sitting. You know, it's very rare that my art is all done in one sitting. I mean, they are when I'm doing quickie things, but when you're doing things that take time, and this would be a lovely thing to have on your bedroom, wouldn't it? So I'm just doing a kind of crissy crossy pattern there just to have a bit of texture. And I've done some spots. And then I think I'm gonna do some vertical stripes in this space. So I've just done some vertical stripes in that space. Good job. Now down this one, I'm gonna do some vertical stripes down, like this, chuk, 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 chuk. 
but we're going to make it like a parquet floor. So we're going to go up this way, or I guess a parquet floor is a bit old fashioned really for you kids. This is like doing a feather. So you have the lines going up the center one way and then you have them coming back the other way. Then you have them going up this way and then you have them going back that way. Then up this way. And then back that way. Duk, 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 duk. This way. Gosh. That way. Doo -doo -doo -doo. This way. I'm trying to go nice and quick for you. And that way. And then I'm going to finish with another stripe and put those repeating spots again. You all right? Yeah. Daisy's fingers are hurting, I think. And then we're just going to do a kind of lovely, I guess, a sort of arabic -y kind of arch along the bottom. Like that. Like that. And then we might put semicircle there I'm making this up as we go along people so I'm just kind of designing it as we go all right we're good that's kind of the center of that trunk okay now what you need to do is we want to pattern all the other bits and some bits are going to be darker than others so you've got to think how is it going to look so this is we want to make sure that this looks like the trunk so if I do the little scallop here where the trunk comes out I don't really want to pattern that bit, but I want to make sure I pattern up here. So I'm going to make sure that the trunk area or this socket that the trunk comes out of has its own pattern, pattern and then it will be repeated here. So I've done one, two, three, four rings there. So I need to do the same over here. One, two, three, four. And even though you only see the top of that, it's the same, same rings. So this top one, I'm going to do stripes this way. So that's that first ring, stripes that way. The second ring, I'm going to do scallops, but I'm then going to do scallops and scallop, scallop, scallop. And I need to do the same here. So I'm doing that kind of flout repeating pattern. It's like an upside down um, W or letter M and you're getting that kind of scallopy pattern. The next one I'm gonna do is the letter U, or it's a big W, let's call it a big W. So a big W that goes from the top and the bottom of each one, and then another one inside, like that. And then this one here, I'm gonna try and do a curve, a spiral. So I can't do a repeating spiral on that one because look, it goes off the page, but I can just give the impression that there's another one there. And the last one I'm gonna do is a zigzag and a zigzag on this side. And inside that zigzag, I'm gonna do some spots and I need to repeat it on that side. Beautiful, so now those two tusks really are the same. Okay, we wanna to go to the ears next. And the important thing about the ears is to make sure that you've got the design going this way, so out this way, because you want it to look like the ears, oh, Karen's just knocked over all the pens. You want it to look like the ears go out. So that's really important. Now the ear on this one is here and it's here. So this bit is actually the head. So I'm just gonna mark in some design pattern on this head and I'm going to do a kind of an Arabian um, arch like we've done down at the very bottom here. So I'm gonna do Arabian arch there and I'm just gonna put in a couple of curves and again, trying to repeat the curves, trying to repeat the patterns that you've done somewhere else so that it has a really good story, that it all joins up. I'm pretty sure that actually mandalas do have sort of story definition in them. I'll have to ask my friends that, that come from that cultural background. Okay, then I'm going to make this into a beautiful repeating, almost like a, a star. 
coming out there. And I'm making this quite different because obviously I want the ear to be different. I'm gonna make that right across like that. So that pattern is gonna be quite different there. So I think here we'll do a double layer. And here we'll do a double layer. And I'm gonna do a kind of swirl in between that double layer there. And the same on there. So when you repeat it, then it reads like, you know, the same chapter. I guess it's the same kind of thing, you know? So it helps identify that that's all the same part of the same recurring pattern. Okay, and then in here, we'll do some circles that will grow. So they'll get larger and larger and larger. Same here. Small, small, larger, 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 larger. It feels like that should be another large one there. We need to do the same there, even though you won't have many. The same there, even though you won't have many. So there's your patterning that goes along there. Okay, so for this ear, let me show you what I want to do. I want to, I want to mirror the shape of our eye. So I want to try and create on the ear shape this beautiful um, paisley shape. So I'm going to start off here, and I'm going to draw. And the paisley shape is a bit like... Um, a bit like a drop of water. That's the easiest way of saying it. It's a bit like a drop of water. So you can see, I've tried to go to help it show that the ear is opening out. And I need to do it on the same over here. Sorry to wobble you just then. Make sure I've got that in there. So I'm gonna do the same over here. I'm starting here and I'm gonna go out and you're just gonna see that that shape went off there. Then I'm gonna go down as if that paisley drop has gone there, that's that one there. And then I can fit in that third paisley drop, which is there, all right? Now, inside the paisley, I want to mirror the eye. So we're gonna put the eye shape in, but we're not gonna draw an eyeball, okay? I'm just drawing the eye shape. Oh, I'm on the I'm on the curve of the table there. Like that. And then here. Beautiful. How's that looking? Good? Okay, and then we're gonna do a couple of those simple lines that like the ones in the eye without doing an eyeball. I need to rub that one out where I had a bit of a wobble. And then I'm gonna do the scalloping around the outside. My pencil's starting to get a bit um, sharp, so I'm um, blunt, blunt, sorry, so I'm just gonna sharpen it. Oh, I've lost the lid, I've lost the lead. Okay, so we're just gonna scallop around the outside of that. Beautiful, chook, 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 chook can't wait to see your designs guys and hopefully you've got some really interesting patterns you could make your patterns much bigger than mine if you wanted to now you could one option is that you leave it as a pencil drawing and maybe just get some colored pencils and color in whatever you would like another option is that you just leave it as a pencil drawing completely if you have access to a photocopier, you could always photocopy this and it could then be a doodle sheet so you could colour it in separately again. So there's many options that you could have a look at. So it feels like these shapes here need a second line. So just looking at them, it looks like they're just a little bit too simple. So I'm going to do a second line around the outside. And I'm just using a regular HB, so nothing fancy here at all. And we're going to do exactly the same. Remember to repeat your pattern. I mean, I'd be interested. It does, just because I'm doing a repeating mandala kind of pattern, doesn't mean to say you have to. If you want to draw hearts, rainbows, and, I don't know, trolls or whatever, you can. You can really draw whatever you want. The key thing is we're all having a go, and we're all drawing and enjoying our art and trying to create a beautiful picture. Beautiful. Now, 
I'm going to leave my drawing there at this stage because I'm going to show you what I want to do in terms of um, using my pen to colour it in, okay? So I've done it in pencil. If you wanted to leave it in pencil, that would be absolutely fine. Um, if you wanted to go over and texture, the only uh, disadvantage to this is that the kids are going to find it really long. Well, uh, as a parent, you're going to love it. Children, you're going to go, oh my God, I've had enough. Well, if you've had enough, stop and go back to it. But the reason, the advantage of colouring it in with a Sharpie is that you can add some areas that you can actually colour in completely. And this is when you start to get one of those doodle sheet looking pictures. This is when it really starts to look like a mandala. Because at the moment, everything in our picture is all weighted the same thickness. All of the images in it, all of the lines in it have all got the same amount of tension on them. But when you start changing it by blocking things out in big block pen, then everything starts to look different. So you can just see, I'm just starting with this one here, and this line, look, I'm just making wider. So I've colored it down in one thinness, in one layer, and now I'm just making it slightly wider at the end as if it's opened up. And that one's gonna be a single level layer of, of black. And this one here, I actually want to leave the center bits. So I'm gonna color in the triangle and leave the dot. And then I'm gonna color in the triangle here and leave the dot. And then I'm gonna color in the center of that shape and leave the outside. So that's the way you start to play and you start to play with what's called the positive and the negative. The positive is the bit that's, that's left behind. In this case, it's white paper. And the negative is the bit that you've taken away and you've taken it away by coloring in the black. So this makes your picture in, in, in terms of like a mathematical STEM picture, playing with the positive and negative is just that next level. And in some bits you want to add more positive, so you wanna keep more white area and some bits you want to add more negative. You wanna take some away and you wanna leave some, okay? So for example, with this area here, I want it to be quite dark because there's a lot of white showing. So I'm gonna do my crisscross quite heavy. So obviously I did it with gray pencil first and now I'm going over it in the pen. But I wanna make sure this time I really get it to the edges because I want this black area to be quite heavy compared to the white areas that I'm leaving behind. Because that's what's gonna give it a different texture and a different look. Beautiful. So I'm gonna carry on and carry on doing all of this Sharpie pen. And then at the very end, my plan, I'm just gonna go and show you what I'm gonna use. How's yours going, Daisy? Good. Yeah? So these classes are all about uh, you guys using things that you might have at home. So a Sharpie pen most of us have. If you haven't got a Sharpie pen, use a black biro. Most of us have got those sort of things. Um, and then if you've got very little children, you might have these fat pavement chalks. And these are the fat pavement chalks that I'm gonna color mine in. So I'm just gonna show you right now. The plan, I'm gonna flip it over. So it's gonna take me another half an hour probably to, to black line all of, all of the picture. But once the black line is done, I'm gonna go across using the flat of the chalk in bands of color. I think I've got three colors with these chalks. If you haven't got the big fat chalks, you can use the small chalks, but just use the side of them, use the side of them, okay? You can then, just with your fingers, softly smooth them out. I have this with my children quite often. Some children have real um, issues with touch and tactile feelings, or maybe, they, maybe they've got allergies to, to dust and stuff, in which case, just use a bit of toilet roll or a bit of kitchen towel, and you just go round in a soft, round motion to soften up those colours. If you don't like the hard line there, then just add another colour in between. So I'm just adding that yellow and it will just soften up the colour change, okay? So the plan is, is to do this mandala to finish off the drawing, which I've nearly done, 
do all my black lining and then I'm gonna do that gradient in chalk. Um, and I think it's gonna look fantastic and it's gonna go in our COVID-19 art gallery. I must give it a better name than that because that sounds a bit terrible. What could we call it, Daisy? I don't know. Um, maybe you can come up with a name. Uh, isolation art. Sounds a bit terrible as well. Um, stop being boring. Uh, I don't know. It's, it, I mean, this is one of my daily doodles, but as you know, I've done all the other pictures as well. Um, so hopefully you got some good ideas there. You're um, gonna put, put it back. Let's have a look at, can I show them yours, Daisy? Let's have a look what Daisy's done. Ooh. Daisy's starting to come on, and I can see that you guys are gonna be exactly the same. It's gonna take you a while to fill all that piece of paper. If you haven't started this um, and you're going to do it tomorrow, then maybe you think that that's too big, then give them just an A4 piece of paper and do it smaller, all right? So there will be a daily doodle tomorrow. Later on this afternoon, I'm going to do my monster make, uh, which is doing our monster box. So tune in for that. Like I say, if you can't tune in because you're doing something else, and I hope you are, actually, no, I hope you're back with me. <laughs> but if you haven't and you're doing something else, then you can always do it um, later. The other thing I want to give you a heads up, kids, is that, um, or parents with lilies, uh, next week, next week, I'm going to do two really cool things for tiny toddlers. We're going to make some sculpting with some Play-Doh, so make yourself some Play-Doh, stick it in an egg tight container this weekend and we're going to do some sculpture with play-doh and the second thing is we're going to do marbling with shaving cream so and that is just as fun for big kids as little kids so ask your dad if he's got some shaving cream if he hasn't and mum is doing her essential outing this weekend to the shops then just go and get the real cheapest I think when I bought it for art class it's something like 40 or 50 cents a, um, a jar the kids will absolutely love it. You just need shaving cream and you need food coloring. If you haven't got food coloring, you could use um, inks if you've got inks. Maybe you've got some writing ink at home. Um, if you haven't got that, you could always, like I showed you before, make up your own set of inks by using um, the putting inside of felt pens in water and creating your own kind of inky water like that. All right, so next week, Really cool, marbling and um, making models using Play-Doh. Uh, I'm gonna finish this mini make and then I'll be back for the monster make later. Have a lovely day. Do you wanna say bye, Daisy? She's exhausted. Bye. <laughs> bye guys, see ya.